Rounds of showers and thunderstorms on the move across central and eastern Kentucky. I'm firing up live first alert defender just ahead. A would-be robber tries to break into a bank in Lexington with an unusual tool. Two men are in the hospital and another is in jail after the Scott County Sheriff said a passenger in an SUV tried to smack a pedestrian. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon. We have another day with showers and storms popping up around the area. Some of those storms could be strong, even severe. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the storms on the First Alert Defender. Chris? Yeah, we're about the time of day, guys, when we start to see an increase in those showers and storms. And right on cue now, Defender's starting to light up with some big boomers just to the west of central Kentucky. Here is Defender and what it is seeing. Notice how we had some bigger storms a little earlier, southern and southeastern Kentucky. That action beginning to wind down. They're going to watch the course. Corridor from Lexington to Louisville down toward E Town for additional clusters of some strong storms. Getting in on some thunder and lightning here from Monticello over toward Whitley City, but that action. Just like the storm here around Jackson is winding down. Northern part of the region, Maysville, the occasional clap or two of thunder with a teeny tiny shower that is uh, and thunderstorm that is right on top of Mason County. Lexington area, skies have looked a little threatening for the better part of the day. We started out the day with some heavy rain and gusty winds. Now we're starting to see a little bit of action trying to crank here in the northern parts of Mercer County between Salvisa and Harrodsburg. That'll roll toward Nicholasville coming up in the next little bit. What I'm really going to keep an eye on, though, so, thunderstorm here on top of Louisville and a severe thunderstorm that is to the southwest of Louisville. All the storms that are out there are going to roll their way toward the east over the next several hours, and we're likely to see some additional clusters of storms developing. You can actually see that now on Defender with a uh, ton of lightning with those storms as well. Everything that is out there, again, rolling its way on toward the east with a tropical influence that comes our way by the end of the week, courtesy of what is left over of Bill. So rounds of thunderstorms ahead. There's a small severe weather threat. This is more of a heavy rain concern over the next few days. Guys, then the tropical rains move into town. We're going to break it all down for you in greater detail and show you when what is left of Bill comes over top of Kentucky. That's in a few minutes. We're tracking a break, breaking news alert this afternoon. A Montgomery County Road has just reopened following a deadly crash. It happened about 1 this afternoon on Kentucky 11 at Bunker Hill Road, north of Mount Sterling. Officer Don shot this video of the scene from Sky First. You can see just how violent the crash was. WKYT's Garrett Weimer is near the scene with the breaking details. Kentucky 11 is now back open here after a deadly crash that shut it down for about three hours. Officer Don flew over the crash scene in Sky First, and in this video, you can see just how violent the crash was. A truck on its side, the front end of the car just smashed. Montgomery County Sheriff Fred Shortridge says it was about 1 o'clock when a truck here on Kentucky 11 crossed the center line and hit a car head on. The two people inside the truck were taken to the hospital, but the man inside the car was pronounced dead at the scene. It all happened near Bunker Hill Road in front of the Judy Drive In. Sheriff Shortridge says it's too early to tell whether alcohol or drugs were a factor in the crash. I've got another detective at the hospital that uh, is talking to the parties mm -hmm. involved that was transported. Uh, I'm sure we're going to draw blood, uh, and of course it'll be determined later. Kentucky State Police were also here on scene helping with accident reconstruction, but again, the highway now back open and the scene is clear. In Montgomery County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And Sheriff Shortridge says that spot is a common area for crashes. We're tracking the investigation into an attempted bank robbery. It happened about 1 o'clock at the People's Exchange Bank on Richmond Road at North Hanover Avenue. The doors were locked, so police say the uh, would-be robber used an unusual item to try and get inside. Sam Smith shows us what happened in this Crime Tracker report. Yeah, police say this happened just before 1 o'clock this afternoon. If you take a look behind me at the door, you can see glass has been knocked from the frame. Police say a man wearing a bandana over his face tried to walk in the front door of People's Exchange Bank, but the door was locked. Police say the man then grabbed a potted plant that was outside the bank and used it to break the glass in the door. Police say because of the man's actions and because he covered his face, they're saying he was attempting to rob the bank. They say he took off on foot after the glass was broken. Police say they used a canine unit to track the suspect but there wasn't any luck. 
The search continues for the men. No one from the bank would comment on the attempted robbery. Folks that live around here say they're used to seeing this type of activity at the bank. No, I'm not surprised. Uh, they did this a little over a year ago. Apparently it's easy pickings. They learned they can do it once they've tried it again. If you saw anything out here around 1 o'clock today, you're asked to give police a call. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. And no one was hurt in that robbery attempt. What started as a prank ended with two people in the hospital and another facing charges. The incident happened last night on U.S. 25 in Georgetown when two people in an SUV spotted someone they knew walking along the road. WKYT's Sean Moody shows us what they did and why investigators weren't laughing. The sheriff said this started out as somebody trying to be funny, but ended with two men in the hospital and another in jail facing charges of DUI and leaving the scene of an accident. The Scott County Sheriff said Daniel Blackburn and another man were in an SUV heading north on US 25 when the passenger noticed some men they knew walking along the shoulder and decided to play a prank. Thought it might be funny to get close to him and smack him in the back of the head. He said Blackburn veered toward the group and the passenger leaned out the window to smack the man, but instead his face smashed into the back of the pedestrian's head. At this point, we're not sure if there was an intent to hurt. One would have to assume, though, at, at a speed of 40 to 50 miles per hour, even if you're going to try to smack someone or make contact with your head against their head, somebody's going to get hurt and or even killed. The sheriff said Blackburn kept going and dropped the passenger off behind the Sonic restaurant on South Broadway so he could walk to the hospital. Emergency crews took the pedestrian to UK hospital. Both of them are expected to be okay. A deputy pulled Blackburn over not long after. They said he admitted to drinking four tall boy beers. He faces charges of DUI, leaving the scene of an accident, wanton endangerment, and failure to maintain insurance. Now, investigators said Blackburn blew a .233 on a breath test. The sheriff said he is under 21, so the legal limit would be .02. In Scott County, Sean Moody, WKYT. The sheriff says his investigators will meet with the county attorney to discuss whether the passenger would face charges. The search continues today for a missing eastern Kentucky man. Our county-by-county county coverage begins in Owsley County. Conley Baker Jr.'s family says he's been missing for nearly a week. 20 agencies have been looking for him near his Owsley County home off Lucky Fork Road. Family members say they're concerned because Conley has a heart condition. A Laurel County woman facing charges for trying to set a fire at someone else's home. Stacy Smith was arrested for the incident on Slate Ridge Road last night. The sheriff's office says she tried to set fire to the garage, or rather garbage, in the yard and didn't know the person who lived in the home. She's charged with trespassing and public intoxication. Today we're hearing from one of the teens who survived a shark attack. The attacks happened earlier this week off the coast of North Carolina. Both victims lost an arm in the attack. Michaela Perriera has more. One of the victims of that brutal pair of shark attacks off the coast of North Carolina speaking out for the first time from his hospital bed. 16-year-old Hunter Treshel recounting that traumatic shark encounter that cost him his arm. I was just in about waist deep water, I would say, playing with my cousin, like I said, and I felt this kind of hit on my left leg. Like, I felt like I, like normal, like it was a big fish coming near you or something. That was the first I saw it was when it was biting up my, my left arm. The teen from Colorado was swimming in the waters off Oak Island when the shark attacked. I didn't see it coming. Uh, like I said, I felt it on my leg. Um, and then I saw it once it had attacked my arm. This happening a mere 90 minutes after another shark attack unfolded on the same beach, less than two miles away, where 13-year-old Kirsten Yao had her left arm torn off by a shark. Bystanders leaping into action to prevent the victims from bleeding to death. The kid just got his arm bit off. Okay, are you with the person now? My husband is. He's got it wrapped up in a towel as tight as he can. Just two days after that life-changing attack, Hunter vows to remain positive. I have kind of two options. I can try to uh, live my life the way I was and make an effort to do that even though I don't have an arm, or I can kind of just let this be completely debilitating and bring my life down and ruin it in a way. Out of those two, there's really only one that I would actually choose to, and that's to try to fight and live a normal life with the cards I've been dealt. That beach is still open for business, but officials are warning people to swim at their own risk. 
The remnants of Tropical Storm Bill have started moving northward. The storm dumped as much as five inches of rain in Texas, soaking areas still recovering from last month's flooding. It's expected to bring heavy rain and the risk of tornadoes to Oklahoma and Arkansas as well. Officials say lakes and reservoirs will be able to handle it, but it's going to be close. It's going to put those reservoirs back where they were three weeks ago, at the very top of, their, of the pool elevation. The governor of Texas says he is not aware of any deaths caused by Tropical Storm Bill. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Here's a look at the most viewed stories on our website right now. People want to know more about a deadly Leslie County crash, Kentucky's new booster seat law, and all the new laws going into effect next week. You can find these stories and more on WKYT.com. Families of the students killed in a balcony collapse have started arriving in the U.S. from Ireland. The victims were celebrating a 21st birthday when the accident happened in Berkeley, California yesterday morning. Thirteen people were on the balcony at the time. While some engineers believe it should have held, others say it was overloaded. You know, it's a wake-up call. We're going to fully investigate this, this particular incident. So we, with our inspectors, we we're not going to leave any rock unturned. Late this afternoon, the mayor of Berkeley said the investigation points to water-damaged wood as a potential cause. Police continue to search for two escapees from a maximum security prison. New York State Police say there's no evidence that David Sweat and Richard Matt have managed to get out of the area. The men have been on the run for 12 days. More than 600 officers are searching for the pair, down from more than 800 just a couple of days ago. A fifth member of a jury has been dismissed in the Colorado theater shooting trial. The judge said the juror did not reveal all the facts when she recognized a witness who testified back in May. There are now 19 jurors, including seven alternates. The trial is for James Holmes. He's accused of killing 12 people and injuring dozens more during the shooting in July of 2012. AT&T must pay $100 million for its unlimited data plans. The Federal Communications Commission says the company misled customers by slowing down their Internet speeds when they hit a certain level of data use. AT&T says it's been upfront with customers and that the FCC has known about the practice for years. The brave action of two young boys saved two babies from a fire. The boys were playing video games in an Oakland, Florida home when they smelled smoke. They looked out the window and saw the neighbor's house on fire. The two ran outside and quickly learned that there were children in the home. They ran inside, found the babies, and brought them out to safety. Mostly just dark. All you could really see was black and orange flames everywhere. And um, I was kind of scared of doing that. They are lucky. Firefighters arrived shortly after and rescued two other children still inside the burning home. A new it's time for better living, health education, and consumer news that impacts your life. As adults, many of us know how hard it is to lose weight. For children to lose weight, it's all about teaching them to make educated choices. New apps can make that easier and get children healthier in the process. Holly Furfer takes a look. Weight loss apps may offer help for children battling their weight. The Sanchez family says that was the case with their daughter, Alana. We try everything as a mom to make them healthy, healthy eating. Um, we watched our portions, but she still seemed to increase in weight. They found a weight loss app that groups foods as either red, yellow, or green. Children are taught to reduce the unhealthy red light foods over time. I switched to smaller plates. And I've switched to letter cheese. You have to watch your portions a lot. Weight loss apps are like a modern day food journal. You can take them with you wherever you go, so they're really convenient. Research has shown that by keeping track of your food and what you eat and drink, it makes you more mindful of it, and therefore you're more able to lose weight. And if a child or family needs additional help, some apps offer coaching, usually at a fee. Alana is making great strides. And now I'm more aware of what I'm going to eat. It's just really taken all of the fighting over food away from me, and all I have to do is guide her and remind her. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. 
Speaking of healthier choices, swap out the junk food and get a little color in your life because today is National Eat Your Vegetables Day. Vegetables are essential to a healthy lifestyle. They contain important nutrients to keep us going and they're necessary for vibrant hair and skin and can also help prevent certain diseases. So eat up because it's an unofficial holiday. Ben & Jerry's will soon offer ice cream for those who can't stomach milk. The company says the dairy-free treat will be made with almond or coconut milk. This comes after more than 27,000 people signed a petition asking Ben & Jerry's to offer dairy-free options. The company says you can expect dairy-free Ben & Jerry's to be available by next April.